I'm Corey Miller. Speaking of warm and fuzzy, yeah. let's really do this right. Okay. Ooh. Would you look at that? That seems Ooh. about right for tonight, Christmas Eve, right? Look, the other side is almost as good as that one is. I have no room to criticize Adam Wainwright's uh, gift wrapping ability. The competition was fierce until the 15th tee, where Egan stepped up, teed off, and went directly into the water. Lion seized his opportunity. How did this all come about? How did you become an honorary captain for the All-Star Game? When three foot seven Chicago-based actor Eddie Goodell hit the scene and surprised everyone, becoming the shortest player in the history of Major League Baseball. Cardinals turn to what they do best in game two for much of this season, it's been their pitching staff. And for 15 years now, it's been their gladiator behind home plate. Over 29,000 fans showed up. They packed the stands and they packed the parking lots outside. You're only 19. You know there's there's possibly right. a, a long way to go. Right. Have you visualized what stepping into the box at Bush Stadium might be like? Oh, plenty of times before I go to sleep. St. Dominic and Valley Catholic. Great matchup. Two undefeated teams at 3-0 and and two teams that are outscoring their opponents so far this year by more than 40 points. I saw somebody comment and asking if there's any suspensions tonight. No, there's no. Not. Not. And in fact, the Blues are getting a player back from suspension. Mm -hmm. Ivan Barbashev is back on that fourth line, and that's going to be a big addition. For a lot of these kids, throwing isn't just a good workout. It's helping them get to college. Simmons' place in baseball and Cardinals history is cemented. He's got a bronze statue outside Bush Stadium, his number retired by the team, and finally, a place in Cooperstown alongside the all-time greats at his position. Took a stroll out there. Next thing we know, Paul Goldschmidt launches this ball right at us. We knocked over about five chairs, turned into little kids. I ended up corralling it. I'm not going to take credit for actually catching it. Great game there. Let's go over to CBC. Another great game. The Cadets trying to return to the state championship, taking Let's on Lee Summit North. Low scoring first half. Patrick Heider finds his guy, Jeremiah McClellan. We've seen that a few times this year. Yep, yep. Nice play in the Summit territory. Then on fourth down, Heider's going to do it himself. Sneaks into the end zone for the score. CBC up 7-3 to three at that point. North's going to drive as the half winds down. Big hit. Watch this amount. Here it comes. Justice Johnson Ooh. puts the hit on the receiver. Ooh. You know, sports are competitive by nature. From a young age, we're often taught that winning is the most important thing. But two young cross-country runners from southern Illinois recently shared a moment that showed what sports should really be about. Our Corey Miller has the story. How was your day at school today? Good. Nice. Seventh grader Anna Florzik can navigate the halls at Breeze Elementary pretty well. But if it were up to her, she'd be outside, navigating a cross-country course instead. Go for a run this weekend? Yes. Yes. We need to because I'm out of shape right now. <laughs> Don't let her modest demeanor fool you. Anna knows what she's doing out in a race. You know, she's an easy person to coach. She uh, definitely just knew everything about the sport. I, I think I'm okay. <laughs> but she does admit to a love-hate relationship with practicing her hills. Like every time we do hills, all I want to do is go home and sleep like the rest of the night. Lately, Anna hasn't been getting recognition for her running prowess, but instead for her act of kindness. Let's go back to the state meet at DuCoin, where Breeze was taking on competition from all over Illinois. And the DuCoin course is a doozy. I've walked this DuCoin state course. You start off right up a big hill, and for these little kids, it is a struggle. But in the heat of competition in the biggest race of her life so far, Anna spotted a runner from another team who was struggling. She didn't hesitate. Anna knew she needed to help. She said that she was struggling a lot, and she needed her mom, and she needed to, you know, get some help. And I kept telling her that it was okay, you could push through it, and that I've been in the same place that you are. Once you're in that place, in that moment of that race, it's so hard to finish that race whenever you think that you can't make it. That's when an onlooker captured this photo, a total stranger encouraging her competitor so she could finish too. I just saw that a person was struggling and I, I didn't see what team she was on. I didn't see, you know, anything specific. I just saw that she was struggling and I would do that for anybody um, at any race. I would just help them. It made me feel good because most people don't want to do that. They're more worried about themselves and it made me feel good. I would have probably quit and, well, I'd probably try to quit but she really helped me want to stay at the race. 
Both girls did cross the finish line, and the story of Anna's kind act found its way around both schools. And Anna and Caroline finally got the chance to meet properly. I like science and social studies. Yeah, those are my favorites. And the pair is hoping others can follow in their footsteps by promoting kindness to whoever might need it. Just to be kind, and it's really not that hard. It takes minimal time, minimal effort, um, but it really does help people and it makes their day. Whenever people are kind to me, it definitely helps me um, become a better person and makes my day. If people tried to be kind all around the world, this world would be so much better. <laughs> Anna and Caroline exchanged phone numbers after they met so they could text back and forth, and Anna's mom told me they both felt as if they had always been friends. For Sports Plus, I'm Corey Miller. Over the course of the past year, COVID-19 has impacted all of our daily lives, and for some, ended their lives. For Highland basketball coach Daryl Cunningham, it gave him the fight of his life, but he refused to check out, and his community refused to let him fight alone. In our Odd Couples Housing Spotlight feature, Corey Miller takes us across the river. I felt like we believed that we can win. You have to believe that we can win. Daryl Cunningham's basketball journey may have eventually led him to Highland High School, but back in the day, you should have seen him in action. This Chicago prep phenom was a McDonald's All-American and one-time teammate of Shaquille O'Neal. I just tell the kids the only difference between me and Shaq is he went on to make $100 million and I didn't. <laughs> Cunningham starred in college too at DePaul in Kansas State before taking his talents all over the world, playing the game he loved. Eventually his love became coaching and he settled with his wife and two kids in Highland, Illinois. His Bulldog players know him as coach on the court, but he's a man of many talents. I grew up in DJing. Uh, my dad was known as the music man in Chicago. They don't really know, like, I can really, really DJ. But last fall, when he tested positive for COVID-19, music and basketball were replaced with one focus, staying alive. And like the next day, they were like, you're positive, but by that night, we knew something was seriously, you know, we knew something was wrong. Daryl has had kidney issues in the past, and with the arrival of COVID, it wreaked havoc on those fragile kidneys. He ended up in the hospital with a catheter in his chest. And the doctor said, ma'am, had we put it in his arm, he would not have made it. We had to do his chest to keep him alive. My brother had four times, if not five times, that amount of waste built up in his body that was just sitting there because his kidneys were not functioning to move that waste out of him. While doctors worked to save his life, Daryl tried to prepare his sister for the worst. She wasn't having it. So I was like, uh, you know, I I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it, but I'll never forget it. She came up to the bed and she grabbed my hand and she said, Daryl, you fight. She said it twice. She said, Daryl, you fight. And then she looked at me and she said, you do not get to check out on me. You don't get to check out on me. I said, it's always been the two of us. It will forever be the two of us. You don't get the option to check out on me. I said, you don't get to leave your family. You don't get to leave your wife and your children. And he didn't. Daryl and his doctors got his kidneys under control to where he could do dialysis. In six days, he was out of the hospital. And while he was fighting his own battle, Coach Cunningham's adopted town of Highland never let him forget that they had his back. If something happens in Highland, Highland is gonna step up and take care of their people, they always do. There were personal cards and messages from Highland and around the world. There were loads and loads of food for the family. And there was nearly $40,000 raised to help with medical costs. He came in and saved our program when no one else was going to step in and we're there for him and his family and any little thing he needs, we've got him. Maybe the world is divided, but what I was seeing through my own situation is that there are some people that care about you as a human being. It's been overwhelmingly very, hum it really humbles you. Now, Coach is already back on the sideline and his team is back on the court as Illinois high schools return to play during the pandemic. He's still doing dialysis and is working towards an eventual kidney transplant, but these days, Coach Cunningham is loving the little things. The little things he quite nearly lost. Every day that I come home, I try to say hello to my kids. I try to say hello to my wife. Uh, 
I just don't take it for granted. When I'm out here coaching today, I tell our kids that, hey, we haven't gotten a chance to play basketball for how long? But don't take life for granted because if it's something, if it's anything I've learned in life, it's, it can be gone in, in an instant, just that fast, just that fast. For Sports Plus in Highland, Corey Miller, Five on Your Side Sports. We finish up tonight with the more for less remodeling, frankly speaking. And what about St. Louis, my hometown? Specifically how St. Louis loves its own. Pat Maroon could win his third Stanley Cup in a row tomorrow night, and people here will rejoice as if he won it here. Our area is sending a dozen or so athletes to the Olympics later this month, and we'll rejoice in them too. Every single member of our sports department is a born and raised St. Louisan, and it shows in the care that's taken with every piece of content we create, because it's our town. I like to say that St. Louis is the biggest small town in the country, and that, more than Provel, what high school you came from, or how much you love toasted ravs, is what makes this place truly special.